Yo, what's going on guys? I'm going to be showing you how to dominate and carry with Zach Toplin here in Season 11. I'm trying to slow my wave down so it starts pushing it. That's fine. Zach, you typically don't want to push early. Zach starts to power spike level 2, level 3. I'm going to take a minion. We could poke him with our W, but I usually will last hit with my W in those type of situations. Your W has more range than your autos, as you can see. All right. Got the minion. You got off a little trade. I'm going to block my minions. So, yeah, anyways, we went for the Aftershock setup. You can go for Conqueror. I uh, been personally liking Aftershock a little bit more than Conqueror lately. He's pushing this into me, so I don't really have to do anything. I might miss a little bit of CS, like that range creep, but he's setting himself up to be ganked. I'm not going to be ganked. I'm going to way out scale him. Zach is one of the best scaling uh, champions in the whole game. That's some absurd scaling. We're going to get our E next, so we can proc our Aftershock easily. On Conqueror, Zach, you typically will get your Q level 2, but on Aftershock, Zach, E is usually the way to go. Alright, we got that range creep. He's poking us down with his little lightning bolts. He's got some range to them. Got it. I'm gonna pull him into that. Hit him with that. He's having some issues because the way they have position on the wave he doesn't really have much room to chase me hit him with the auto attack and a w grasp would have been good here as well i just really prefer aftershock for the scaling grasp is really useless outside of uh laning phase it's really useless then might actually be able to all in him here in a second he doesn't have ignite and i do he keeps poking me with that but it's kind of annoying we actually want to max your w first on zach top this isn't one of your best matchups in the world, but uh, as long as you survive, you kind of just win. He took a turret shot for that too. He's having, uh, he's trying to auto me down. We got both of those. He's still pushing the wave. We'll let him do that. And we haven't been gankable this whole time because we have our passive diving a low Zach under turret is challenging to say the least knock him together hit him with the knee we don't even need to use our ignite here uh, i guess hecarim isn't going to stay i actually want him to stay and help i guess he wants to go somewhere else at the moment it's fine i guess we'll shove it i'm gonna have to pull back here in a second though if volley bear tps to the minions Uh, I actually don't really think he can fight me on these. Even with my aftershock, if I kite back through my minions, it's just like he can't. Because the backline minions, that's a Soraka and a half, and then the cannon minions, a Soraka. So that's basically two and a half Sorakas autoing him, and that's why you see he took so much damage. So even though I was missing half my health since I was a level up, and I have aftershock, I could easily survive through his burst. First item, you're going to want to go bomb me, Cinder. We'll E back to lane. Our wave should crash here. He didn't do a very good job freezing it. He also doesn't have the potions to freeze it very well. Like I said, guys, if you do want to have a little more impact in lane phase, if you feel like it is a winnable matchup, if you're up against something like a Cho'Gath or just like a slow mobile tank top laner who doesn't have very good all-ins, then uh, or just like a melee champion like Jax, you can perform quite well against things like Jax, then going conquer or grasp can be better. But like I said, I went after shock for the scaling and the team fighting aspect. I plan it on going team fighting with uh, the Leona and the Hecarim CC. His wave's pushing to me. He's level 6. It's going to be challenging to fight. I do have a huge item advantage, though. We're going to Q, knock him, hit him with an EW. We're going to pull off. And you can take short trades like these. We'll wait on our cooldowns and refight him. Qing something other than the champion is easy just like queuing a minion and then short hopping into them with your e that way you can automatically land it otherwise if you queue a minion they'll just walk away if you try to walk at them um, 
I'm just trying to trying to take the trade with him. I'm not burning through my mana and he's burning through his type of thing, so we'll hide in the bush. If you hide in bushes, people don't usually gank you because they, they don't even know you're there. Fun fact of the day. He just gave up the CS is what he's pushing to me too. This is perfect. Got that one. Shot my blob right at him. I'm gonna queue him here in a second. Into him, smack it against that. I still have my ignite is the thing. It's gonna be hard for him to Ooh, never mind. That was a lot of healing. <laughs> uh, if I had my R I would have all in him there. I just don't have the damage quite. He is starting to run a little bit more, man. Once Volley Bear procs you with his uh, thing, it can be challenging. I think he's backing for his potions. I'll just shove it. He doesn't have TP. Zach has really good wave clear for being a manaless champion. He's kind of like a tank version of Vladimir when you think about it. Zach has so much AP damage and lots of sustain. Low cooldown, snow mana costs. He's a melee tank, Vlad. Got this shoved in. We have a nice little... Ooh, I thought we had a CS lead on this guy. He actually has CS lead on us. That is crazy. I guess he did have TP, but still. Alright, we'll just leave that. I've been showing top side for so long, and if Olaf's not bought, that means he's probably coming top side. So, oh, looks like he's bought. We're safe. Uh, I'll go ahead and take his golems. Oh, I think he might have actually seen me there. I'll get his red buff or gank mid. <clears throat> Ganking mid's probably easier. I think I really is roaming to this. Well, I'm here though, like we should fight this. Ah, that's unfortunate. I think we definitely could have fought that. It doesn't look like the team wants to. Hecarim really isn't ahead at all. He's actually kind of behind. Level 6. Hecarim's one of the strongest junglers right now. They're going to nerf him. He just took a short trade. Once he marks you, the next time he hits you with his bite, it does even more damage and it like heals him a bunch. So... Good to let that fade off before you go in for another trade. We're going to knock him into this. Into an EW. He walks back to step on my blobs like a troll. And he can't even chase me when he does that. So basically what happens in these trades, you, you're trading off your HP for their mana. And uh, as long as you just don't let yourself die, you'll, you'll uh, essentially out-trade them. Even if he, like, even if he tries to all in me, he doesn't have ignite, so he can't really. I'll just flash the axe. I don't want to deal with it. It's kind of lame. Olaf came top. It's been a close lane thus far. I suppose it is his probably his best gank. He's gonna shove, thinking I backed. I can hear Olaf with his oracles over there. He's making the noise gonna aggro him since he has uh he's dead he's literally dead he killed himself he took too much damage plus i had ignite his bomby cinder will activate the turret so when i jump in and cc him exact like actually plays really well against bomby cinder top laners because of that if they ever push up to your turret it's super risky for them you just e into them and then yeah bada boom smack them together they have a huge lead now even if he is up a little bit of cs Like my bot lane's kind of just winning. There being a bunch of turds. Being good little turds. Volleyball spawned in. He's going to be somewhere around here. It looks like I really is roaming to me. She has absolutely zero chance of killing me unless Olaf is also here. I have my E and I can just run to a bush and then jump out. Alright, looks like she decided not to come over here. It's probably the right call. 
we'll get our chem tank and then we'll come back to lane. Go ahead, click on the E. You want to max your E second. Gets a really long cooldown per level. It reduces two to three seconds per level, which is kind of insane. It's really, really high per level, considering it doesn't cost any mana. It also increases the range, which is super, super valuable. Oh, you got it, Leona. Yeah, that was so close. Hoochia! Got him. I think if we add teleport, our CS would be a lot more stable. I think that's why Volgar has a CS lead, because we've killed him essentially twice, and uh, he has more CS than us. Unfortunate. Don't know where he is. Doesn't really matter. As long as you have your E, you can escape. Looks like they took Carol. They're going to come for me here in a second. So what we want to do is pull this over here. Or just like stay away from Volibear. Olaf's probably up here is the thing. It's a really high chance. I'm going to get out of vision. Yeah, he's over here. This is weird. I just don't like, even understand what's happening right now. I have my E, I should use that first. Looks like Olaf doesn't have the I'll run down with my chem tank into W. E on this guy. I need a I get him, Leona. Jesus, he's gonna live, he's gonna heal. Oh nice, we got him. That's awesome. Pulled out of the turret range. You don't wanna die and be completely under the turret. If you do that. The turret will kill every single one of your bloblets. It'll target them, even if you have minions under there. So make sure that your hip, your centered hitbox isn't directly under turret. You'll be very, very sad. You should E before you R though. Like there, I queued W. I should have E then R. I accidentally pressed R first. I should say I pressed T first. And I'll just walk this way. There's nothing this guy can really do. Oh, there's Zaya. Why is she even over here though? Hey, really? Hit her with a knight. Uh, yeah, she's gonna get the kill. It's whatever. If I really didn't have R, she would have lost that hard. She also did so much magic damage. 420 ammo magic damage. It's quite a bit. Uh, yeah, at this point, against their team, they're all AD, except for Volibear, he's half and half, so we would actually want to go for Thornmel instead of Spirit Vistage right now. After we get top turret, we want to roam. Since our team's already grouped in Volibear's left lane, it might actually be better to just group with our team here. Our team should go top lane off of this, though, after they get that mid turret. If you are playing Zac top, odds are, <sighs> odds are you're not going to be getting like crazy amounts of kills in lane. You're just going to be farming up and scaling. If you want to get crazy amounts of kills in lane and do huge outplays, it should be should, like try Jack's top or Irelia or do Corruption Potion Talon top. I made a video on that. It's disgustingly strong. I do think Zac top is generally better than zack jungle right now or i should say it tends to be a safer option than zack jungle zack jungle is just takes forever to scale and he has some pretty rough matchups 270 damn got him just flashed on him i didn't want to mess with it uh, his his bite was about to be up his W and he was gonna heal like 400 HP off me Could have also used my chem tank. I've been using that too much We have our W max, so we're just gonna proceed to max our E second now that we have this We really do want to roam. I'll just shove this in before I do Our W's hit really really hard 
Nice. Alright. Now we just group. And then the enemies are gonna FF. They don't really have any other option. There's like when you look at their comp, Olaf, Foley Bear, those both fall off. Honestly, I rarely falls off too a lot of the time. If the enemy team has a proper front line, it can be very challenging for Irelia to make her moves. She just gets held in place. And even though she's a tenacity champion, she'll take tenacity. And the precision tree, like, Zach has three knockups. Tenacity doesn't work against displacements. That's only against things like stuns and snares. We used our Kemp tank to slow her at the end of all of our CC. She dies. I guess Olaf doesn't have R. He's just getting perma cc E on top of this chick, Q her. Smack her ass against the minion. I'm gonna get creep block five, six times, but we're gonna make it out anyways. I can keep going too. I can heal off these things. You get two bloblets when you when you use the Q1 and Q2. You get one for bloblet for each. So one for hitting and one for you smack them together. Looks like the enemies are not going to contest. Zaya's probably depressed because she lost bot lane, so she might be in base or just farming golems or something. We have all of our HP back. It's a beautiful thing about Zach. You don't really have to get warmogs on him a lot of the time. Cause like you saw there, just two monster camps. I was full health. I don't even have spirit issues. If I had spirit issues, the healing would be even bigger. Volibear's dead. Yeah, we just group up and end here. This is what Zach should look like. The main difference is since my bot lane won, it's just like the fights aren't close, but even if they went neutral or let's pretend even if my bot lane lost a little bit, like let's say if my bot lane was zero and two, we'd still be winning these fights hundred percent. It's just, they don't have CC to match me and the Leona. Grab her. Hold her still for Hecarim. That's free turret. Caitlyn's going bot side. I'll stay up here. If I have two teammates up here, it should really be Caitlyn coming to us. Besides, this turret is equal outer as the bot lane turret is. I'm gonna hit him with my chem tank to slow him after I CC him. I'm also gonna ignite him, hold him down. I'm tanking the turret as well. Jesus, my teammates take 10 years to kill that guy. <laughs> oh man. My blob your blob lists get tankier the more HP and armor and magic resist you build. So once by the time you have one or two items, your blob lists are pretty tanky. They'll take more than one turret shot, and minions have trouble killing them. At least non-super minions do. Nice. We can chill in here. We can chill. Two of them are dead. Two of them are bot. They don't have anything to really push us out. Our minions are coming up. I don't need to tank for him. He'll be fine. I don't really know if Leona should have backed there. I think we just stay, get inhib, and end this game. Typically, you don't want to take inhibs before the 20 minute mark because Baron hasn't even spawned in yet. So if you're taking it pre, like, I guess pre 19 minute, you're basically just giving them a bunch of free CS because your super minions will just eat up the whole wave and you won't get any of that gold. And then they'll catch a full healthy wave and get the gold out of it. So even if you're winning really hard, typically pre like 19 minute, taking inhibitor is a mistake and it can actually help the enemy team to get back into the game, particularly if they outscale you. Now, if their comp doesn't outscale you, it doesn't really matter. But if they do, you really don't want to take inhib until at the soonest 19 minute knock her up into the Q into the R and she's a goner that's a tank one shot right there guys Zach has high base damage and this is what we scaled for this is what it's all about our aftershocks on a pretty low cooldown it looks like bada boom another one Caitlyn's really fed. She's making me look bad. She's really, really fed. She has a beautiful comp. Uh, I will say our team's a little on the AD heavy side. Hecarim's AD, Kiana, and Caitlyn. Full, like, AD champs. But me and Leona do 
virtually pure AP damage, so even though we are 80 heavy, we got some, a little bit of a mix. I think we have a better mix than they do. Their only AP damage is really half of Volley Bear's damage, so they have a worse mix than we do. Not chem tank, gotta be very close. <laughs> I've walked a runner down. <laughs> I wanted to see how far it is. It seems like if they're on a different screen than you, if they're like a screen and a half away, chem tank doesn't work. They gotta be within a screen and a quarter, just about. Screen and a quarter, about a screen and a half max. Oh, Zaya, what are you doing? She's typing, you already know. She's got her hands on the keyboard. Oh, landed it. Got the ignite on Olaf. I can just stand here and tank the turret. Get, oh, I didn't. Yeah, look how much damage she takes from those. Those chunker. Wow, they're really not surrendering. There's just no way. I, I get not surrendering if you think you can come back, but with a comp like that, there's just no coming back. Like, no one on it. The only person on our team who falls off is honestly. Kind of the Hecarim, that's about it. Like, Kiana does well late game versus melee heavy comps, and they have triple melee. Kiana has a lot of easy spells to land off on melee champs. She can really struggle if the enemy support is like a super heavy enchanter, like Janna. A really good Janna or like Morgana can be pretty hard for her, but they don't have that. She, you know, she's actually really fed. I don't think I can kill her. She's got three full items. I only have one and a half right now. I need you to shoot him, Caitlyn. Shoot him. No, Caitlyn. Oh my God, why am I moving so slow? Oh, they all ran this way too. They didn't split up. How funny is that? <laughs> Caitlyn got annihilated. She died in like two auto attacks. I thought we could kill the Irelia together, but this wasn't meant to be. What are you gonna do, Olaf? Let's be honest. Oh, he's pissed. I still have 274 HP. What are they gonna do about it? Oh, they got me. I rally with the dive and she's gonna live. If I would have pinched off my E under turret, I might have lived. You know what the sad thing is? She killed me and my ultimate was up in like two seconds. No joke. It was like one or two seconds. Oh, well, we spent our gold. I'll get plated steel caps and uh, heck, I'll get a Zanias just for the just for the hell of it for the armor. It'll be it's honestly not that bad on tanks as long as it's an AP tank. I feel like Zach can use it really well because after you've used all your CC, as long as you're still tanking and your like teammates are behind you. The enemies are throwing everything at you and you can stay alive or block it with a Zanias. Like, that's just GG, dude. I wouldn't recommend it versus, uh, if they have, like, a Caitlyn. Anything that can set something on your head right when you come out, it's a bad idea. So, Caitlyn, that would be really, really bad. She'll just trap you and then you can't even jump. That's the main one that comes to mind. I would never build a Zanias or a GA versus Caitlyn. It's too painful. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. I guess we could have gone for a dead man's. I think the Zanius will be good though. Especially since our team's like 80 heavy or whatever. I really has got some true damage and some armor. Where's Olaf gonna go? I have my Ignite. I'll use my Chem Tank on her at the end of the combo and she's, she's, she's dead man. It's the power of Hourglass right there. And the power of Ignite. <laughs> oh man. Where the how the hell did she get over there? She's that was so wonky. Nice job, Hecarim. This guy's so far away. Yeah, they're too far away. I can't do anything.
Get my aftershock hourglass. Oh ha ha. Yee! <laughs> they can't kill me. They're still chasing because I'm low HP. But killing me is hard. I have a bunch of armor. Just because I'm low doesn't mean I'm killable. Like that. She's she's going after me instead of Caitlyn. <laughs> Come on, guys. No, please win. Just auto Caitlyn. Auto them and you'll win. Oh, my God. I sh oh, my God. I died. That's tragic. Well played, though. That's generally the concept behind Zach Top. Once again, you can go for Grasp or Conquer if you think you'll be able to solo your opponent in lane. If not, go after shop for the scaling. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this Zach Top lane commentary guide. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.